at 17, I found that I was pregnant. I thought the world was rosy, so I would just have my baby. But I told my mom, I came out and told my mom, and she was like, no way, you're not having this baby. This is gonna ruin your life. She was like, you can forget about college. If you get married, like your life is gonna be over. You're gonna be tied down. You know, you're just forget about your dreams. And I just remember thinking, I really want this baby. I want to go to college. I still have dreams. And I just remember feeling afraid. After I had the abortion, I got really sick. I felt in my heart like God was punishing me. Like, this is my punishment because I had this abortion. And I know, now that I know God, I'm like, what was I thinking? But I did. I thought he was punishing me and that I was going to die. But I didn't care anymore. I was like, okay, well, I'm going to die. I'm going to die. You know, I had this abortion. I just don't care anymore. My mom took me to Baylor emergency room, and they immediately admitted me. And they said he had left part of my baby inside. I remember my mom telling my sister, well, she's sick, you know, we like kind of making it seem like we don't really know what happened. And so my sister came and she brought get well balloons to the hospital and a plant. And I just remember closing my eyes and I was like, like if she really knew why I was here, I remember thinking, my sister would no longer love me. I was 19 years old, just two years after I had my first abortion, and there I was again, considering having another abortion. Um, the, the best that I can describe it is just to say that I wanted to be a mother. I, I wanted my son, and so, I chose to give birth to him. Damien is 15 and he is super funny. He's smart. He just brings so much joy to our family, to the four of us. I would be missing out on all of the, the little things he does, the annoying things he does, the funny things he does. You know, just how rich my life is to have him, but often I think I would be missing out on all this. And I just, sometimes what I think is how empty my life would be without him or that hole he would have left if I would have gone through with the abortion. We're just now starting this morning. The girls are walking behind us here. You know, every morning we start with 39 minutes of silence, walking and remembering each year, a moment of silence for every year of Roe v. Wade and remembering the baby's lives that were taken in that year. We know that this issue is in the middle of massive debates in our nation even now. There's a war on women. And the pro-abortion community would like you to believe that it's a war that's being raged by out-of-touch congressmen who don't understand women's rights that want to take away a woman's right for reproductive health. But I want to say to you that there are 39 young women standing behind me who have a different point, who have a different voice, who want to say that abortion hurts women, not only physically, but mentally and spiritually. And so we are standing in the gap for young women around the nation, and we are walking on behalf of 54 million babies. And we thank you for your support. We thank you for your prayers, and thank you for coming today. Our voices will be heard. Jesus, I bleed your blood, for God's hand is in my nation. God has a portion in every mind.